All right, hello and welcome back to another Coffee with Squato. And today we have quite a big update because a couple of weeks ago, um, NeoVim 0.9 was released. So let's go to the NeoVim GitHub page. And if we go down, let's make this a bit bigger, go back to the releases, we find that the latest stable release is now 0.9. And this required some internal changes in the Quarto NVIM and the auto.nvim plugin um, because they interact directly with stuff in NeoVim, namely the tree sitter module. Um, but you don't have to worry about the details there. The only thing you need to worry about is that if you want to use the latest version of the Quarto NVIM Kickstarter, and conversely also the latest version of Quarto NVIM, you need to be on NeoVim 0.9. Um, Let's actually open up Quarto Envim here. Um, however, if you can't upgrade, I still have a branch of the Quarto Envim Kickstarter version that is configured to use the versions of the plugins that work with NeoVim 0.83. So if you are on the Kickstarter, and you can't upstate, uh, upgrade your NeoVim, just go down here to branch NVIM 0.83. And there you should be good to go. Um, now I also did some restructuring of the Kickstarter configuration. Um, namely, let's actually make this a new split here and open up the configuration. If I now go to uh, let's search for Lua and Quarto, Quarto.lua file, which contains the Quarto Envim plugin configuration and the plugins we need. It now contains a bit more. Previously, I had things like uh, tree sitter or the LSP configuration for language server protocol um, in their sept files. And this makes sense for most configurations because, I mean, there are different things and you often want to group them together um, and not just have everything in one big file. And now the Quarto Lua file is actually quite big. It's now like 560 lines. Um, however, I think I, this makes quite, quite some sense and I also got feedback that uh, it would be nice to have everything more into one, in one place. And now everything you need to interact directly with Quarto Envim is in one place. So this means if you want to use the language features like code completion, the completion uh, plugin is also in the same uh, file. So nvim cmp, for example, it's our completion plugin. Um, and because in order to work with it and work with Quarto and Otto nvim with the completion plugin, this needs to be configured somehow. We need to tell it that we want our Quarto source, which is from the Auto Envim plugin. Um, so because this needs to be explicitly configured to work with block Quarto, um, this is now in the Quarto uh, file as well. And the same goes for the language server protocol configuration and the tree sitter configuration. So everything you need for Quarto um, and everything that relates to that is now in this file. Uh, so if you previously configured your language server somewhere else in a different file, now you always need to look into this one uh, file. And this also made it a bit simpler when I refactored uh, this and made a version that explicitly specifies all the versions you need if you are in the older NeoVim version. Uh, you only need to look in this file and then check out the version numbers here. And this will automatically choose the correct versions for your use case. Um, if you are on the older NeoVim version. Um, there's one big change in, in the ne how NeoVim releases things because I used to always download the .dep file because I'm on um, Top OS, which is based on Ubuntu, so I could just install Debian packages. Um, however, this is now discouraged and I, after reading up on it, uh, it makes quite, quite some sense. Um, the main way to use Quadrant like NeoVim now is with the app image. And this is nice because it's like a self-contained thing. It, it's just one binary that contains all the things. Um, so it doesn't rely on the system resources that other Debian, that like the dev package would. So 
it kind of just works and the, um, this is kind of cool. So if you go to the latest release, releases, you will want to download uh, the nvim.app image and then check out the instructions here. It's actually really easy to just download it. Make executable, you can easily right click in, click on it, go to properties, uh, specify, allow executing it as a program, or you use the ch mod and add the x for executable. Um, and then you either call it by its name, or what I usually do is I put it somewhere on my path, like in the bin folder, for example, and then just call it nvim and then I'm good to go. Actually, let me show you how to do that right now. Uh, let's right click this, copy uh, the link address, and let's open a new terminal here. Let's go to bin, and now let's type wget, paste it in, and now I use minus o to specify what I want to call it. Um, so this will be permission denied because I need to be root or sudo use, uh, have super user powers to put something directly in the bin uh, for binaries in the bin folder. Um, and because I'm the only user on the system, I and I sometimes also install stuff for all users on a system, I will put it in here. And then I'll put in my password and I'll do it right now um, because I already have it here. Um, but then you just have it in your bin folder and because the bin and USR bin is on the path already, um, if you type nvim, it will just find the correct version. All right, so much about this. Let's check what I wanted to show you again. Um, okay, with these like breaking changes, I also used the opportunity to introduce a couple of more cool changes. Um, namely, I found a really cool plugin to profile Lua plugins, which meant uh, thanks to thanks to this person on GitHub, I was able to find out exactly which parts of the Quarto Envim and the auto code completion and code synchronization thing are fast and which still need some work. So I was able to really optimize it, and now it's a significantly uh, it's, it's it's quite 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 a lot faster. Now. And yeah, I, I really like this. So uh, thanks to the, uh, again to to this person on GitHub. Um, this is very helpful. Um, and if you want to try out profiling your own plugin in case you're writing them as well, I have the same setup here in the dev folder. You can just uncomment it and use these optional plugins I have in the configuration. Oh, speaking of optional uh, plugins, I think some, some people, of course, like stuff like GitHub Copilot. Uh, so I also included a small section if you want to configure this yourself. You just uncomment this part. And this adds the Copilot plugin. And it also adds a completion source for NVIM CMP. However, we still need to tell a, need to activate the source. So let's go down here, uncomment this. And now we have Copilot activated. Uh, I'm not going to save this right now because uh, sometimes it just gets in your way. Um, because Copilot has some, some good ideas and some bad ideas. Um, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Can be handy. But I, of course, wanted to give you the option to enable stuff like this and make it really easy. So, um, speaking of more features and, and bug fixes, uh, I want to also give a big shout out to uh, GitHub user Winter again, who fixed the Quarto preview. Uh, also on Windows PowerShell. So um, rejoice, Windows PowerShell users. Um, so even though I, of course, want all of you on Linux, uh, now you can use it on Windows PowerShell. Uh, OK. Now another uh, thing, and this is part uh, part of the configuration, the Kickstarter configuration, and part of Quarto Envim, except directly, two cool new features are added in this whole process after the last release and one no it's actually three things i want to show you first thing uh, a key binding just to insert different types of code chunks we just type c and o which in my head stands for code and o is always uh, means open below or kept always open above so we open a new line go into insert mode so co would be code open an r chunk 
So uh, code open P for Python, code open L for Julia. Wait, why is it L? <laughs> it, it should be J. I should change that. Um, I will not edit this out. I will just uh, make this uh, make this change after the video. Or a bash shank COB. For some reason, in my head it made sense to make L for Julia. All right. Um, and now if we have different languages in one document, like for example here, we have Python and we have some R, uh, we usually start out by making a Python console, uh, C, uh, leader C for our code tools, and then I for IPython, which opens an IPython console. And now I want to execute some code. Let's say I run this here. And now I have an invalid channel ID. And I assume this is because I was previously sending code to something. Um, and now I changed the console. Now it's a different console, so I can't send to this console anymore. Now, how do I, it's actually a perfect um, way to introduce this. How do I decide now I want to go there? I could manually display, display the number of this console and then configure Vim Slime to send code to it. I can also let the configuration do it by going into this window. And then I press leader CM, which stands for marked. Down here, it tells me the number that this uh, console has. So we could set a menu like this. But now after marking it, we go up again here. And then we press leader CS, which stands for set console or set target. And now if I send some Python code, it should end up down here. That's good. So we can use the same if we open a new console like leader CR to open an R console. Right now we're still sending stuff to the Python console, which means we get a syntax error here because well, this is R code, not Python. Um, if we want to send down here, we go here, down here, press leader cm to mark it, leader cs to set it, and now we are sending back code down here. All right. <clears throat> and another feature I wanted to show you is uh, this is now directly in the Quarto Envim uh, plugin. And this is sometimes we, of course, open up a document we have been working on yesterday and we want to go back to where we started. So we don't want to manually execute all the different code chunks. Um, so for this, I introduced the two new functions, quarto send all and quarto send above. So while we're down here, we can say quarto send above, and this will execute all the code chunks above into this one R console. It just happened here because but it doesn't change much because it's the same code. Um, and then that's also quarto send all to send all the code. And the way this works is it uses the language of the current code chunk we're in. Um, so if I'm in here and I use quarto send all, I would send Python code to the R console, but this, this would be quite stupid, but I can configure it leader C M to mark it, leader C S to choose it. And now I can send all the Python code here. And this sends it up to the line on which the cursor is. Um, so uh, if you are in the last code chunk, make sure you are on the bottom of the last code chunk, um, because otherwise you only send half of the last code. But you need to be in a code chunk in order to tell it which language you want to send to. OK, uh, there's one caveat, and that is it currently does not respect things like uh, this thing, like evil false. It will still send it. Um, but I I will actually introduce a new feature, new feature for this in the coming days. So uh, stay tuned for this, and I'll see you in the next video.